Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Foundation and to episode three of this series. Last episode, we really uh, focused in on farming. We started off uh, with uh, sheep and getting our clothing industry going. We added in a couple of weaver's huts in the old part of town, as well as clothing markets, and we actually expanded to a whole new town center. So we're building up a new population center right here, and we did that around baking of bread. And what that involved was adding in, and am I paused? There we go. Uh, adding in a couple of farms and getting our wheat growing here along the shore, which was a vision I had from the very beginning when we started this town. And now it's come to life. We added in a windmill, which turns the wheat to flour. And in the center of the new town, we built a bakery. And this is a very beautiful building. We built it around the new town center, added in a bread baking market or bread selling market, and uh, we did that, uh, added another one of those in the old town as well. So today, we have a couple of things for this new episode. We have a couple of things on the agenda. Number one, and our immediate goal, is to build a church, and I think we can design that right off the beginning of the episode here together. I should probably pay attention to my villager list and how many people are new and unemployed. Let's go ahead and set up a few of them as builders. They can maybe get working on the church once we finalize a design, and I think we'll hit pause uh, just so that nothing crazy happens while we are designing our church. We got money in the bank, which is fantastic, and sorry, I got a tickle on my nose. Uh, an apology for last episode. My neighbor, who I love, was mowing his grass. I didn't think the audio would get picked up when he came and did the turn and tried to go the other direction. He does the turn right on the driveway by my house definitely got picked up. So apologies if you heard the lawnmower in the last episode, but let's hit pause and got this tickle. Okay, so we have planned our church and we set aside an area for it. Now, the cool thing about this game, I love that you can zoom in. I love that you can pan the camera vertically as well as around in a circle. This is the area we have planned for our church and I want it to be grand. I want it to be a cathedral. I'm wondering if we should start small. Now we do have two town centers. We have this one here, uh, which is close enough to the old town that if we build a church here, most of the old town will be able to access it. But I'm wondering if it would be wise. We've gone ahead and allowed housing to expand all the way out on this uh, peninsula. I'm wondering if it would be wise to add a church out on this peninsula. Maybe we can make room for housing over here. I don't know if anyone would squeeze a house over there, so we will see. Uh, you can always, you know what, if you click edit, you can always, I think, completely move buildings like this. I think we could move the whole thing. Is that right? Maybe not anymore. No, I don't seem like I can, I can, oh, edit. No, never mind. Okay, so we can't move that building. I thought maybe we tucked the Lord's Manor back this way, but I wonder if like a small simple uh, sort of European style church makes sense to tuck in the old town. A few people will be able to access that and then the new town and the old town alike will be able to access our grand cathedral. So maybe we get started by designing a small church and we see how that looks. And, and we'll do a couple of designs throughout the episode on churches. We'll also work on uh, tool making because our church is going to require a lot of tools. So we're going to have to add uh, an iron mine, iron smelters, a blacksmith, and uh, a coal uh, coal hut, I think it's called. So let's go ahead and take a look at... Ooh, okay, so this would take up most of this area. And we'll pan the camera around a little bit. I think this is the core of the church. And we're going to want to extend this upwards. Maybe tuck it back as far as... Ooh, we can go pretty far back. We can go... That can't be right. <laughs> go maybe there. Can you build outside your zone with this? Perhaps. Uh, we are going to add an extension on the back, and I think I'm learning how this camera operates. If we go extension B, that's the rounded one. I'm going to tuck one of those in, and we'll bring it up close to the height. Maybe down one. Yeah, that looks good to me. And on the front, we're going to add a tower. Now, we have to figure out exactly which tower to add. There are three, I think. We have round tower which is very similar in design to this Lord's Manor. So I think maybe we go towards something that's a little more, yeah, maybe we do this one and let's bring this up to a nice serious height. This looks like villager capacity 23. We have a population of 66. So if we do add this church, we'll need a second one. Can I bring this tower inward? Ooh, ooh, I can do that. Put it right in the middle of the church. 
and then it would need to be taller. I can see that. That doesn't affect villager capacity or anything. That just increases our expenses. And then what if we did the small tower on the front? Now, this one is a bell tower. So if we build it up, say, just above the height, or maybe just to the height of the... the maybe just to the height of the, the arch of the, the church... It's very hard to envision it in this early stage, but I think this could be quite a cool design for us. Let's rotate a little, and we'll tuck that in like that. Now, we have to add some details to it. I haven't figured out exactly how the stained glass works. It looks as though it snaps on to towers, but I haven't quite figured it out. I don't know if we have the resources for stained glass yet either. Uh, the arch we can add when we get to the cathedral-type build. Decorative tree we can add later. Wall fountain we can add later. The cross, I think, would be a wise choice. So if we do a cross, maybe one up there, maybe a gargoyle. Now, which direction is he facing? If we do that, I think that's what we'd want. Yeah, try that. And another cross on the front. Okay, maybe we lower this down one notch, right, and then we'll add a door right to the front of this thing. Now, the church stairs are great. Uh, they have this, like, sick rounded staircase that they go up. Now, am I going to be able to add this right to the front of my church here? It doesn't seem to want to do that. It needs to go on the core and not on the tower. So that would mean our door would have to go on the side here. Which I guess is okay. Maybe we'll add a second door. If I, oops, if I zoom in, my camera seems to, to, to pan more quickly. There we go. So let's go ahead and add a second door right here. Boom. And then maybe on the front. Okay, we're getting... This is not that simple a church. Uh, but, but we're starting with something fun. Let's go with wall fountain on the very front. Boom. Total cost 189 66 tools, 20 planks, and 100 gold. The planks are easy. The stone, we got it already. The problem is the tools. If we want to get those at this point, we got to trade for them or we need to build up our industry. So what we're going to do, uh, and we have choices here with colors, guys. Stone, which I think suits this part of town. Red, which means uh, white with red roofs or white with blue roofs. I think we'll save that for the cathedral. We'll make this one all stone. We'll click start construction. we got a lot of builders. They can get to work on this thing. And while they are doing that, uh, we are going to get to work on our industry. We're going to start building up the industry for making our own tools. Once we got that rolling, towards the end of the episode, we're going to plan out this, our, our big central uh, cathedral. And it's going to go right here. Now, let's have a quick check in and see what kind of room we have for people to build houses. I think we're going to have to expand this out a little bit. So let's go residential and we can see the desirability is expanding out as people move outwards. Other people don't mind living out that way. So we'll expand out this way, this way, and maybe down, down this road a little bit here. They might have to take out some trees, but we'll see what they do. Uh, this is one of the organic parts of the game. It's really up to the villagers where they choose to build the houses. So all we can do is is uh, all we can do is tell them where we're okay with them having houses, and they decide everything else. So I'll do this. Eventually, I think we'll remove that lumber camp right there and make room for more housing. Uh, but for the time being, I think we've made plenty of room. There should be room for two, three, four more houses. I'm not sure how many we need, how many people are without a house at the moment, if any. And uh, we've got our church started so let's get working and let's unpause because we're going to need to get the industry rolling um, let's unpause and we are going to work on the beginnings of our oh baby on the beginnings of uh of our uh tool making industry so we have an iron mine one of these seems to be very it will do just about everything you need i'm going to tuck it just like we did, did with the berry hut and stuff like that i'm going to tuck it right on top of this okay we've got plenty of builders and let me scroll down we're gonna we're gonna be able to put up to five of them on iron mining i don't think we will need that right out of the gate uh, a villager is upgrading his house all right and then the next stages are the smelter the blacksmith but you also need a coal hut now this coal hut also requires tools so you know what i'm gonna do is actually pause construction on this church 
uh, for the moment. How do I, there we go. We're gonna go pause, just so that all of our tools don't get dumped into that while we're waiting to get the industry up and running. Uh, and we'll get people to focus on this. We can prioritize it and people can come out this way. Winona's bringing planks, we're well underway. Okay, so the coal hut, I'm worried that this is something that people are not gonna wanna live near. So I wonder if maybe we tuck it out in this region. Is this too far from everything? I'm eventually going to move our stone production out here, I think. Um, or maybe if we just tuck it. I did leave... So I designed this, guys. I had them leave a bunch of these old growth trees so that we could have a nice separation. I wonder if maybe I just tuck the coal mining back here. Okay? And people will get to work on that. We're working on this already. And then after that are the smelters. Now, when I had five people going on my iron mine, I realized I was building up so much iron ore, it was insane. So uh, I don't think we'll fully man it. Either that or if we do, we're going to have to build multiple iron smelters. Because one with one iron mine, both those things fully manned, did not work out. It did not keep up. Oh, and this is kind of cool. That is another new building kind of step by step. I like it. It's very cool how they do this in this game. You get to see piece by piece this thing come together. Okay, guys, so why don't I give it a minute? I'll let my coal mine get built. Uh, I'll get the, uh, or, sorry, the coal hut get built, the iron mine get built. And the way the coal hut works is it converts wood up here into uh, charcoal. So that's how that's going to work, as opposed to it being a mine. So we're going to let this go. I'll come back to you guys in a minute. We'll check in, and then we'll get working on the smelter, the blacksmith, and we'll get to be able to work towards the end of this episode on a grand cathedral once our starter church has been constructed. All right, guys. Coal hut nearly done. Come on. Let's see this thing come to life. I always think it's nearly done. I always come back about 12 seconds too soon. There we go. So another cool looking building. You see a giant pile of coal. You've got these burners where you would be feeding wood into the bottom, uh, developing charcoal that you'd then shovel out maybe out the backside. I'm not sure how this style of coal burning worked. Uh, I wonder what this hut would be used for. It's not supposed to be a mine as far as I know. I think it's supposed to be used as for creating charcoal. This is supposed to be the mining operation where I guess that looks very much like a tunnel where people would be digging underground and then using this elevator to bring things up from below. In reality, when you put people to work on this, what happens is they actually chip away at this just like they do with the stone. And I think we're ready to put people to work. So we need uh, iron, uh, sorry, iron miner. And we're going to go ahead and make maybe three of those to get started. And two new villagers joining. Perfect. And we're going to head to the coal hut. And they're called charcoal burners. So my, my logic is correct. And I think we'll put three people to work on that for the time being. We'll take our new people and we'll get to work on creating the smelters, uh, which are cool looking buildings. They go great next to the blacksmith. I don't think they have a negative effect on like housing desirability or anything like that. And we're planning on building them this part of the town up with that in mind I kind of I'm kind of questioning the way that I've laid things out I mean this new town doesn't have the sort of symmetry and flow of the old town if you if you kind of do the 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 overhead zoom this old town has a really nice circular feel to it everything is is focused around that well uh, the new town is a little bit more haphazard I probably could have moved the bakery out a little bit and made room for more housing. And you can see so many crisscrossy paths between all of the things I have going on here. It's a bit of a mess. So I'm not sure how and where we'll tuck the blacksmithing stuff in. But the next step is an iron smelter. And I think I'll make two of those and one blacksmith. And I hope that with three coal miners, that is the right balance. So blacksmith. Uh, whoops, that's not how you do this. Uh, what was I doing? Charcoal burner. Go ahead and take that job. Okay, and then building, we are going to head to the iron smelter. So you can have a look at this building. We can zoom in on it. Very cool looking, right? So if we're going to have the church, I think we'll have the church face right over here. Uh, that means there'll be a narrow pathway along here for people to walk. And then where do we do? So if I'm going to have two of these, maybe we do one on either side. And, ooh, ooh, I kind of feel like they should be right side by side. 
You know what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and take out... Gosh. We're really going to need the wood if we're converting it to charcoal. I just wonder, maybe I can reposition this down the road. Let's go ahead and remove that entirely. We're going to go add a new lumber camp, and we'll add it somewhere convenient. We've already got one right down here. I hate the positioning of it. As we expand, we're going to expand out this way, so maybe we'll add another lumber camp. Maybe right here, something like that. So we won't mess with our workforce. The same woodcutters that were working at that one are gonna move uh, down to this one. And then we'll have made room, gosh, sorry, learning the camera still. And we're gonna make room to have uh, a couple of uh, these smelteries. Now, the reason that I thought about doing them side by side is I kinda want that little wall that extends off to the right to totally connect between the two. So. If I'm going to do that, that means that the door to this one, and let's zoom in so we can pan this camera around tidily, the door to this one is going to be facing backwards-ish. Well, where is the actual door? Is it... I think it's that big barn door looking thing. That's what people are going to need access to. So what I'm kind of picturing is the two stone walls meeting, which would mean having one be backwards, uh, and that doesn't really... That doesn't really work. Okay, well, let's get our first one in and we'll, we'll plan out how the second one might work. Let's go ahead and do, you know what? If I do it on enough of an angle, it's gonna work beautifully. So we'll do it like this and we'll tuck it as close to the cliff edge as we can, like so. Okay, oh gosh. Okay, and so visually, I'm gonna mark that spot in my head. Actually, let's wait for this first one to be done. Once it is and I have a wall to line up with, we'll, we'll do that. We'll add in our second smelter, and we're going to have to add in a blacksmith. Now, I wonder if we should eventually have one in each town. That seems like it would be wise. Um, yeah, we'll figure it out, guys. We will figure it out. Let's, let's wait on the first smeltery to be built, and uh, I'll check back in on you. Nearly there guys. I hope I brought you back at the right time. Yes. Okay, so there's our first iron smelter. Now with that done, it's going to make it really easy to line up the next one. Hopefully I haven't done anything too crazy with this idea of having them backwards and having these two walls meet. But let's go. Yeah, see that? Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to zoom in enough where the camera will only spin slightly. Not so slightly. And if we have to, we'll rotate it a little bit. Yeah, uh, well, we're trying to get that door to be accessible, so I wonder, uh, let's go R, and we're not cutting off the roadway too much, this will force paths to be changed ever so slightly, that, that still works. Okay, so I really like the idea of these walls meeting where their pillars are. This will maybe hide some of our messy crisscrossy paths. And uh, I think since we removed that lumber camp, those old paths will eventually disappear. So who's going to work for us here? Uh, Antonia. Okay, so how? Now let's check in on this, guys. We built the coal thing. I think it only takes three. And we've got Charles, Marie, and Jean, or Jean. Uh, and Winona, Harry, and Agnes, up to five can be put there. Now let's take a quick look at our iron production. Already got 136 ore, so we need to get some people smelting. A smeltery takes two workers. So let's take Julian and Antoine, who built the last place. And we're going to make them both iron smelters. We'll eventually do the same with Rose in Antonia. And in the next wave of people, we'll build a blacksmith shop or two. One for now. We'll build one for now, and uh, and we'll see. Uh, as the population grows, I'll fully man this. I'll probably build a third smeltery and a second blacksmith shop, and I think that's going to be the way to go. But we're going to have a second one of these built, and that is, you know what? I was kind of fawning over the, the looks of the bakery, but I think this smeltery might be my new favorite building. I really like the style of the game, guys. I think it looks, it looks so good, and I don't know how much of that is this... You know, near depth of field, far depth of field, focus blur thing. The ability to zoom in intensely. Uh, the animations of these kind of like, you know, they're kind of like your Xbox One avatar characters. I don't know. I don't have an Xbox. But they're kind of little cartoony looking characters, right? There you go. Who's this? This is Theo Theodorich, the, the, the shepherd. I remember you. From last episode, Theodoric probably is how you pronounce that. So he lives in the old town. I know that. He's been around a long enough time. Uh, so he is looking to fill his needs. So they need new clothing on a fairly regular basis. 
we're not building up a huge stock. So at some point, maybe as my population expands, what I will do is, uh, and did he get what he needed? Preparing to work. Okay, that's fine. Didn't get a new shirt or anything. Um, but what I am thinking is we'll eventually add another, maybe two sheep farms, and we'll add a weaving uh, station in this new town. So that there's a little bit of clothing production on both of our, our sort of hubs of population. And preparing to work. He's going off to work. So you're going to get to see the details. I just like this. I like that you can zoom in. I know it's cute. I know it's just kind of, you know, for somewhat low res graphics, but I like it. I don't know. It has a look to it that is really appealing to me. And you watch him shear the sheep. Now, obviously, he gets completely inside the sheep as he works. It looks a little bit weird. But that's how we're getting wool. So it's not just like you build a farm and you generate wool. Everything has got a person, and they're animated, and they, you don't get the thing unless they go and do the action. So every time he does this, we get one wool. Boom. And you see the sheep slowly regain their... I was going to say fur, but the word is wool. <laughs> All right. Oh, and a second smeltery. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put uh, Rose and Antonia, the female team to Julian and Antoine, uh, to work as smelters. And let's take a look. Are we beginning to convert? We are. We now have 10 iron ingots. So how? what is the ratio? One to one? So they take 10 coal. No, they take two coal in one uh, ore, and they convert it into a single ingot. That's a pretty good ratio. I think that's something we can manage. Um, I think at this point, we're probably producing, does it give us an idea of how much like production per hour? And is there a, like a statistical anything? I don't know that there is. Like if we, if we go toggle resource panel, we don't have like a this much per hour. Okay, but so the next thing we need, we've gotten uh, the first three stages of tool production, creating our own coal, mining our own iron, and we are turning that, that iron and coal into ingots, which now, uh, if we go ahead and, and put Carl and Gwyneth, our two newest villagers, to work uh, in, in the town, we, uh, we can have them building our first blacksmith shop. Now, I actually hate the layout of this new town. It's a mess. You can actually go up to a house and, and delete it and force people to kind of reorganize. But I think the problem is my bakery in the middle of town. I don't know what the problem is. It's just not as good looking. Maybe it's building on a slope that's the problem that's making it seem so unappealing to me. Um, but uh, we need to focus. We need to focus on building a blacksmith shop. Don't worry about your town, UTC. It'll come together. So blacksmith shop Eventually, I'd like to have one in each town. This is a big building, so if we did it over here, this would be the only spot left to do it. Um, I guess you could tuck one back in here, but let's do it. Let's try and have it sort of a whole area here. Maybe we can hide the iron mine and cover up some of these crisscrossy paths if we do this right. Um, let's, let's go with the overhead view, and we'll kind of hide the iron mine in a little bit behind our blacksmith, blacksmith shop. God, the talking is so challenging sometimes. You guys have no idea until you try and do it yourselves. Um, blacksmith shops are iconic. You guys remember playing Skyrim and you come into, uh, what would it be, White White Run? Was that the, I hope I'm getting the name of the town right. You guys will skewer me as a, as a not a true nerd. It's been a long time since I played Skyrim. But I remember coming in, you see the, you see the uh, blacksmith shop right there. You've got the grindstone. You've got a table with hammers. I play a lot of Ark. Ark's got uh, forges and a smithy table. It's a really iconic uh, thing in a medieval town. It's kind of essential. So this building is one that we are going to need, and uh, hopefully it looks as good as the past couple that have come in. I have a couple new people. I'm going to put them to building, and as soon as I have uh, this building done, I'll come back to you guys. We'll employ a couple people as blacksmiths. We'll begin producing our own tools, and then I'll cut away from you. We'll enable some construction on the church yet again, and we won't rely on trade in order to get the church done. It is going to require... This is our small church may i remind you but the small church which where are you right here go ahead and get rid of that it's going to require 66 tools when i build a cathedral it's going to be like 200 and something uh so <laughs> uh instead of buying those tools at 10 a pop we are going to build our own tools and we're going to do it with this new setup coal mine a coal burner iron mine two smelters and a blacksmith shop i like it and uh, it's going to make this town look fantastic. Be back in just a moment. 
All right, guys, we're nearly there. Our boy Carl with the, the top knot ponytail, busy working on the blacksmith shop. I love the zoom in. I know I mentioned this earlier, but I played Frostpunk uh, when it was brand new, and I wished I could zoom into this level. I know the characters are much more detailed, the buildings are much more detailed, so it makes sense that they limited that. It would have been really tough on people without amazing computers. Boom. The simpler graphics of this make it possible. I think that looks pretty good. Now, I don't know what that greenish stuff is. is I guess that's... Is that water for quenching? Or is that supposed to be like molten liquid iron? I don't know. Uh, but pretty highly detailed. You see like ingots on the walls. Uh, we've got little rings of rope. Uh, we've got kind of a, a sawhorse. You got your grindstone. You got a tool rack on the outside. And we have built just on top of the iron uh, production. Whoa. All right. Gosh. Okay. <laughs> So the cameras can be, oh my gosh, can be a little bit tricky to operate. At times, I wanted to get a kind of a view of the street sign. All right, and that's it. This is kind of the, the natural entrance to it. And that means, oh, okay, so there's a bellows in there. Okay, that is cool. It is a very pretty, it's pretty darn highly detailed building. You see calipers and uh, maybe a big hammer on there. I like it. Okay, so we need to employ... Woodcutter could not find accessible resource in extraction zone. Okay, well, this is a good thing to point out. We need, we need uh, in a new form of employment in our town. Our woodcutters have run out of wood to chop because I've told them not to cut down some of this. What we're going to do just nice and easy because we got money in the bank, actually as much money as our treasury can hold. We're actually going to go to the territory thing and we're going to buy a new territory. And I think... I had planned on this one being the next one. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're going to slate all of this for removal. And uh, then what we're going to do is prepare to not keep running out of trees. So I think I had told them, well, we're going to remove all this, right? This is all going to be farmland eventually, I think. Uh, so we're going to schedule all of this for removal. Uh, oh, gosh. Learn to use the cameras, UTC. Um I don't know if we should leave like a little patch of trees sort of for, you know, decoration as the game goes on. There will be a little patch left there. Let's let's leave a little Let's go like this, and we'll have like a little patch of trees in the middle of our farmer's fields. I think that could look good, because um, you can't regrow these kind of oak-style trees. So we'll do this. We'll give them plenty for extraction, and I pause things. So let's go back to full speed. But the thing we need to do to make sure that we have a constant supply of uh, trees and lumber and things like that is to employ for the first time a forester. So that means building, and this is fairly back, a forester camp. Now this is, I think, a fairly cool looking building. And we're going to build it so that it sits right like our, our sawmill, uh, as close to the ridge as possible without coming in and obstructing the road. And maybe we'll do something like that and hopefully that's a good position and then we're going to employ somebody as a forester which is necessary now i will point this out one forester does so much work that they you have to give them a ton to do or you have to have them be a part-time thing where you put a forester on when you need them but they get their work done really fast and then just like residential extraction farm field there is a reforestation uh uh, paintbrush uh, that we can go ahead and slap all over here where I know we have planned to put a uh, farmer's field so maybe I will keep keep the reforestation to and you know what just a warning don't do it up on these cliffs because they will replant trees and your extractors your gatherers can't seem to get up on the cliff uh, properly to uh, <laughs> to remove those trees so unless you want this tree side covered with tiny pine trees uh, don't don't do that so let's go ahead and we'll fill this area and this will be a new area for growing a forest and you can use this to kind of landscape and uh, and put trees back in places where you wished you'd had them before I think I would like a few trees whoops up here now obviously we got a church being built right here so let's trim that back but a little patch right here between the Lord's Manor and the church is going to be nice and oh that was an autosave. And like I said, I don't want them on this cliffside. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll make sure that we are not extracting from this area. I didn't realize there was a little patch here. And we'll make sure we are extracting from the area as the trees become fully grown. Uh, our lumberjacks can go and cut them down. He can keep replanting. They can keep uh, chopping things down. 
and we'll just pull peel this back like this. Okay, so that is going to be a forester. He should be getting to work all, almost right away, except we're paused. How do I keep doing that? I don't mean to do it. Uh, and we'll have them extract through here. So there you go. So I think this is an example of a tree that's too high up the ridge for them to properly extract. So that just, whoops, that just stays there. So if you end up letting your forester plant all over these cliff sides, it, the, it gets covered. Uh, so we've done that. You know what? We'll also have the reforester replant this area for now like this. And we have this whole area up here already slated for uh, extraction. So we'll have him come in and until we know what we're doing with it. Right now it's just sheep, sheep area. We'll go ahead and uh, have him replant trees all through here. And you guys will see very soon the, the baby trees coming in. Okay. So that has been removed. There we go. So we have been set up for reforestation. We also need to set ourselves up. I think I need to still employ a proper blacksmith. So we have a forester. How many people can be employed at the blacksmith shop? Two. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to give, uh, who was that? Gwyneth blacksmith. Catherine, couple of lady blacksmiths. Hammersmiths. Okay. So they are going to get to work on that. We're going to begin producing our own tools for the first time. And we don't need to rely on Davenport. Okay, so here you go. A couple of foresters removing the old trees that used to be here. Uh, or lum lumber cutters. And now we have a couple of... Uh, one forester coming in and replanting trees all throughout this region. Those will take some time and regrow, and they're going to end up looking just like this pine forest, maybe a little bit more spaced out. Um, and uh, you cannot regrow trees like this, which is why I've chosen to leave a few right here behind that sheep farm, and I've chosen to leave a nice big cluster running along the side of my road. I hope that's not a bad decision. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, do we have residential zone. So what is so unpleasant about this residential zone, I wonder? We're very far from a well, so maybe we'll put a second well in along the path, and that will make it easier for the people who live along the road. Let's go ahead and do that. A well, and we'll tuck it in behind here, and maybe we'll get a nice little circular layout. Okay, so we're busy. We're going to put our people to work as builders. And now I'm going to enable construction on the church. I'm really not sure how long it'll take. Population at 78. That's probably a good indicator of how much time has passed when you come back and you see a finished church. But if we go ahead, clear this out, get rid of this, we are going to unpause and allow construction to continue. We have almost all the stone we need which is good. In fact, I can stop trading stone for a little bit now that we're not going to be buying uh, from Davenport quite so much. Uh, we can stop doing that. We're in good shape with planks. They're going to be buying those. We're in good shape with berries. They're going to be buying those. So we can stockpile a little stone. We got 10 people working on it, so we should have lots. And now we're going to get construction on our small church. Um, when we come back, we'll check in. We might need to expand some of the other industries, sheep farming, uh, wheat, or the blacksmith industry. And uh, and then eventually we're going to plan in a minute or two, we're going to get to work on a large cathedral-like church. You see the beginnings of this one going up. I'll take a break from you guys. I will be right back. A cool thing about the church, guys, it gets built piece by piece. You can see our gargoyle is in place, kind of hovering a little bit. We've got the rear extension. We have the front bell tower in place now. Uh, Oh, that is cool. Let's try and spin around here without the camera going too crazy. And the main core of the building is slowly coming together. Obviously, doors will be added to that, crosses, and we have a big tower in the center. You can see the framework for it now extending up. Oh, boy, I, that's... Learn how to operate this camera, sir. Uh, extending up above the height of our, our main roof. And we're that's, that's the beginning, guys. That's a small church. You can see we're only part of the way done. We need a lot more tools, but we're producing our own now. So screw you, Davenport. I ain't buying your crap. Um, now, one thing that's very important, um, our... We keep hitting our maximum money um, because we're selling and not buying so much anymore. So one thing I'm going to do while we're under construction with the church is edit this Lord Manor. And I think what we'll try is adding a second treasury. I teased this concept of putting a tower inside a tower last time. And if we go up to just about the peak... Now we're going to be... This Lord's Manor is going to be taller than the church when we're done. I wonder how high to go. 
what would look ideal. I think we're going to do that, and we're going to go start construction. So we'll add a second tower to the front of the Lord Manor. That's going to increase our treasury probably up into, like, 2,500 or 3,000, and we won't have to worry about not earning money when we should be. Now, I could spend that money. Uh, this is an important thing to mention. Uh, could spend that money and uh, expand our kingdom. And if you notice, by this land, 500 will add 50 to your royal taxes. I think... That is income. But I don't know. <laughs> there should be taxes I'm earning as king as opposed to uh, taxes I'm paying as like property taxes. I think that's how that works. So if you have too much money, it might make sense to buy this and be earning income off of it. I think that's probably wise. But I don't understand it entirely properly yet, I'll admit. If you know the answer, hit me up in the comments and uh, I'll check back in on you. But we, we have a church that is coming together. I don't know. Let's see, we need, yeah, lo lots of stone and stuff. Uh, so we should probably set up expanding our industries before we get to work on a major cathedral. Maybe we will put a major cathedral off for next episode. This one will focus, oh, we're not going to be taller. I forgot how tall we made this dang church. Look at where the, ch the, the cross goes. This is a huge church. This is awesome. Okay, so we'll, we will get this church done. We'll do a little rebalancing of our, our industries, guys. I think that's very important as the game goes on. You want to make sure you have enough berries. That's like a basic need that these people have. And if you kind of outgrow your production, you end up with people not... Oh, God. Why does it do that sometimes? Not having a basic need. So we have one gathering hut here. I think we're in good shape when it comes to gathering. Um, what we can do at this point is add in one more sheep farm. And I think one will do the trick. Uh, ba, ba, ba. So we'll go ahead and add one in and we'll add we haven't had any in in this kind of corner of things So we'll tuck one in back there. We'll give ourselves an additional Shepherd perfect and we're actually going to give ourselves two new weavers as well And what we'll do is we'll add a weaving hut in the new town so, so far, we have clustered our uh, tool-making industry on this side of town. We have a bakery right in the center that feeds off the farming, which we will also expand here when I talk about rebalancing. We've got our sawmill and our forestry hut kind of clinging just to the side of the cliff here. Um, I wonder where the best place is for the weavers. Now, if we go construction, it's a little confusing because sometimes you're looking at uh, professions when you should be looking at potential buildings. Weaver hut. So will that do the same? Should we tuck it right in? I don't think so. I think maybe we find a place on the far side of town or maybe uh Lord, it's so hard to know. Um Yeah, okay. Well let's let's rotate down and around and we'll see about putting it right on the ridge by the, the sawmill and the blacksmith and hopefully not cramping the style of our church yet. That, I don't like that. That's kind of hovering up because the edge is so steep and we're kind of sitting right on top of the blacksmith shop. So we'll wait and maybe, God, the camera, we'll wait and maybe a house can go in there. So let's zoom out. We kept the bakery close to center. How about, is there a nice spot right in here? Nope. Uh, what about... God, this is the perfect spot for it. Maybe I can reposition. Let's let's try lowering this camera. Maybe I can reposition and find a way to do it that I like. So if we bring it down like this, the bottom corner is still hovering, which I kind of hate. And that makes it worse. If we can go right on an angle like that, that works. But I guess I'd have to do it this way. Yeah. Okay, so let's do it like this. We don't mess with the road too much. Done. Okay. That's done. And we're going to have two, uh, we're going to have two, we already have two weavers assigned, so they'll go to work. And this is one thing I should point out, guys. As your population gets close to 100, uh, and this game is in the open alpha stages, I backed them on Kickstarter. So that's why I have access. Um, I think I back them at $40, something like that. This is a Canadian company. They operate out of Quebec City, not, not Quebec, uh, Quebec. I don't know. My pronunciation is probably bad, too. <laughs> but they operate out of uh, Quebec City, and uh, they are uh, somebody I wanted to support. I don't do a lot of uh, Kickstarter backings. I don't pay attention to that many games on there, but this one caught my attention when Corrales played it. I'm a big fan of his. I'm doing this this series and, and thinking about, you know, uh, 
a channel for more chill let's play stuff that doesn't necessarily have a home on my main channel uh, with the dream of someday you know having the freedom of a guy like Corrales love that guy but he introduced me to the game and I thought it was fantastic and I saw he got a pretty decent audience for it so I figured I would eventually back it and, and play it myself um, I like it so far. I really do. And I'm happy I backed it. And I'm happy to see a Canadian company. They way exceeded their fundraising goals uh, when they put together this game. And uh, and I'm happy to see that. So let's continue our expansion here, guys. We've added a wheat farm. We've added a weaver. We've already got a couple people done. Oh, our church is done. Okay, let's very quickly, the last couple things I wanted to do, we'll go take a look at this in a second. The last couple things I wanted to do is add in a few more buildings. And how's our population? So you see names running out. Eventually, I think they'll have names for everybody and maybe even, oh, villagers are upgrading their houses. This is an upshot of the new faith that we've added. They've got bread, not a lot of it, and that's what we're going to make sure they're, that we're stocked up on now. Uh, we're going to go... But we're look at I'm looking at professions again, idiot. Uh, we're gonna go with a wheat farm. We're gonna put an additional wheat farm in, and where I'm gonna try and tuck it in the natural intersection of the roads. Do we try and make it fit together with the other buildings? Let's do it. So another wheat farm. We're gonna need three farmers. Oh gosh, everybody upgrading their houses. We're going to head back to the old part of town, guys, and we're going to see a church. We're going to see some fantastic new housing as soon as I've caught up with this rebalancing. Farmer, farmer, uh, farmer, uh, builders times two, and we're going to add in, um, we're going to add in another windmill. Got so many people upgrading. This is great when you finally unlock the thing that you have needed to get these people what they need. Windmill. Okay. Boom. Okay, and what am I lacking for a windmill? Why is it red? Oh, that's because I don't own that part of the land. Um, so what I eventually want to do is have these up and down the shoreline. I think while we get started, maybe we spread them out about this often and we have them facing out towards the shore. Boom. Now that's going to forge a new path through here which I don't know if that's ideal, but we'll make the most of it. And I think what we're going to need after a new windmill, so we're going to go um, Miller and Miller, Lauren. Okay, so we got a Lauren mixed in with these random named folks. Did I do Miller? I did do two Millers. Okay, so then I think we'll add a bakery for the old part of town, and let's check out our new church. Let's head over here. And let's see, all the tr all the houses still under construction, so there's still a time for a reveal for that. And that is our new church. I started small, and I thought we would get to the cathedral this episode, guys. We're going to put that off for next episode. But dang, I'm pretty happy with that. I love the round extension off the back. It complements the building we've already got, where we've added a second tower. We now have 3,000 potential wealth. Excellent. And it didn't bankrupt us. We were able to keep up producing our own tools, things like that. We're still buying tools from Davenport as we can, selling them berries and selling them planks. And uh, with the new, hopefully with this new expansion, we'll have a better source of bread. And I'd like to add a bakery to this old part of town before all these uh, fancy new houses come in so that we can spread out some of the production uh, into both areas. So let's go here, building, and let's go bakery. And this is a bigger building. So where are we going to tuck this? I think, I think right around here. Okay, your villagers have reached a new status, citizen. And there you go, that's the first of the finished houses. Oh, here, here's a perfect spot for a bakery. Except the entrance is on the other side. So maybe I can do it in a way. I just, I love the way the back of the place looks so much more than I like the front. So I wonder if there's a good spot where... If there's a good spot where I can put it, yeah, maybe we can tuck it in like this. Let's go Let's go with the overhead view. And let's see how tight things are if I do it like this. Okay, I think I can manage that. Bakery. Okay, so the bakery is going in place. Let's zoom in and take a look at the fancy new housing. Who are our first people? Emil and Reinhard. Now, how early were they to come to the town? Emil and Reinhard. Okay, so they came down the road. There are carpenters, and they uh, they upgraded their house beautifully. Uh, and I think it looks fantastic. So that's level three. They're now citizens. If we take a look, what are they going to need next? 
I think that's it in the early stages of the game. I think they have reached all their needs as citizens. They are the same as the needs uh, to upgrade to a citizen. And I think as the game goes on, they will continue adding tiers. I think you're going to have nobles. They're going to add things beyond blacksmithing and, and whatever. But we're just getting started, guys. As much as we may have reached the highest level of citizenry and, and level for our people, so far we have a lot ahead of us. I really want to build a big, expansive city. And the next stage of that is adding in a more impressive church than the one we have here. This is not big enough to service our whole population. This is a small church, villager capacity 23. That might be enough. I don't know how many go in there at a time or how many need to go in at a time. But, oh, and a new building unlocked. Bridge. Oh, this is going to be cool, guys. So let's take a look at this before we end. I did want to contemplate the idea of having, if we do have a big cathedral up here, having the, a bridge that runs down into the farmlands so i i want to see so i want to see how this works uh i think i've played with it before i think if you do something like this uh boom then you click boom and you can stretch it out like this but if, if you notice you can do it in a way where you have this long sloping staircase i wonder if we could use that to create a staircase up to our church i wonder i wonder so let's go ahead and go stone bridge where I do this, and then without extending, I do something like that. No, that's silly. That's silly. We're not going to be doing that. Um, we're going to use this uh, when the time comes to bridge this gap to expand our kingdom out onto this island. But for the foreseeable future, the plan is this. Expand the new town. You can see, I think, some houses being upgraded even in the new town. Um, we're going to need to add a bigger and a more expansive church. And next episode, that is going to be my one and only plan. Build a freaking cathedral. And we've already got the spot laid out for it. It's going to go right here. It's going to service the town, which will expand out this way, expand down this way, and we're going to expand our farming. We've already added in a new house. We've already added in a new windmill, all of that under construction. We have the new weaver's hut to uh, take care of this side of town, and we have a new bakery going in to take care of this side of the town, neither of which had those things. So we're, we're great. Wait, two new more buildings unlocked? No way. What did we get? Okay, a fountain and cypress. So these are decorative things. That's cool. I think those are all the buildings in the game that we are at right now at this stage of the game, guys. God, these new houses look great, eh? Okay, so over the course of the next grade, eh? So Canadian. Uh, uh, over the course of the next episode, so much is going to be upgraded. Our town is really going to be revolutionized, and uh, I think it'll all focus around a big cathedral. I've been kind of trying to wrap this up for like four and a half minutes. I'm sorry, guys. If you've already tuned out, I understand. Thank you so much for watching episode three of foundation if you enjoyed click the like button click on my ginger face to subscribe and hit me up in those comments let me know what you think of the series so far i will be back in your life with episode four and some cathedral building uh, very very soon thank you for watching i'll see you next time